facing years in prison following his conviction on fraud charges. He promised to revolutionize the auto industry, but was found guilty of misleading investors. Today, we announce charges against Trevor Milton, former CEO and executive chair of Nikola Corporation. Who would think electric vehicles and renewable energy would be the perfect platform to pull off a multi-billion dollar fraud? I mean, Elon Musk has made a very solid case about the possibilities of this type of investment using his Tesla model. So yes, of course, not many people would imagine. However, in a shocking turn of events, it happened right before our noses, as you will discover in this video. Be prepared to be shocked at the things one person could pull off, even with the whole world watching. So yes, grab a cup of coffee as we dive deep into the incredible story of Trevor Milton, the man who scammed almost a billion dollars with his supposed revolutionary invention for trucks. Far back and down in the Southwest, a lost highway in Salt Lake City laid the stage for one of the biggest frauds in history. With billions of dollars at stake, this story reveals the bitter truth of deceit and deception. Many fraud stories have been told, but this in itself is unbelievable. At the center of it all was a man once hailed as the next Elon Musk, poised to transform the automotive industry and usher in a new era of renewable energy. Yet, beneath all the facade he put on, laid a mountain of lies and manipulation, which cast doubt on the foundation of his grand vision. But this was not the first time he had walked on the platform of deceit. He's quite known in the field. From previous illicit schemes that left a trail of annoyed and frustrated victims, deception seemed a familiar companion on his journey to success. This man was driven by boundless enthusiasm and heavy ambitions. He got into quite a couple of things until he settled for the one that attracted lots of eyes and attention, and of course, some legal drama. From his humble beginnings in the security and alarm business to the e-commerce business, he seemed destined for greatness. Yet, it was his venture into electric vehicles that would ultimately seal his fate. That was, at least, what he thought. With promises of groundbreaking technology and products, he captivated investors and consumers, painting a picture of a bright future powered by renewable energy. However, as the facade began to crumble, so did the illusion of his success. Well, of course, bubbles always burst, and that's how many of his lies got caught. His carefully built empire began to unravel, exposing the length of his deceit and the depth of his deception. The once promising visionary was accused of betraying the trust of those who had placed their faith in him. Ultimately, the downfall of this would be Elon Musk serves as a stern reminder of the dangers of unchecked ambition and the consequences of greed. As things calm down and people start to forget about his scam, we can't help but ask, why do some people use ideas like this to get rich? Settle down as you hear the story of a man who had the internet bubbling for months when his deceit got exposed. This story digs deep into the life of Trevor Milton, who grows up in Kanab, Utah, a little village known for its beautiful scenery and majestic red rock formations that have captivated filmmakers for years. However, growing up in this setting, Trevor's childhood was anything but happy. Despite the backdrop of his hometown, Trevor faced unending teasing and bullying from his peers, which left a lasting impact on his emotional well-being. He felt like an outsider most of the time, and he often found solace in solitude, retreating to computers where he could escape the harsh realities of his everyday life. To break free of isolation, Milton joined the wrestling team, hoping to find acceptance among his peers. However, his time on the wrestling mat proved fraught with challenges as he found himself repeatedly pinned down by opponents, mirroring the struggles he faced in his personal life. All through most of his childhood, he had to live with the bullying, struggling to be accepted, and this made him more pumped to prove himself worthy. Despite his challenges and setbacks, Trevor Milton's years in Kanab, Utah, laid the foundation for the resilient and determined entrepreneur he would later become. His experiences fueled his drive to prove himself and forge his path, setting him up for self-discovery and success. One day, after thinking long and hard about it, he decided to drop out of college. After making the bold decision, Trevor Milton created his path. At just 19 years old, he moved to St. George, Utah, with nothing but a fierce determination to make something of himself. With the entrepreneurial spirit burning bright within him, Milton wasted no time 
going headfirst into sales and marketing, which is one thing he was good at and loved doing. He saw an opportunity in the booming home security systems and alarms market, and he seized it with both hands. Launching his venture, St. George Security and Alarms, Milton threw himself into the hustle with unmatched zeal. Day in and day out, he pounded the pavement, knocking on doors and making sales pitches to anyone who would listen. And yes, people listened. He made them listen. Many people found his marketing exceptional, so doing business with him was smooth. Milton's dream knew no bounds. As the years passed and his company grew, he began to dream even bigger. He knew that he was destined for greater things, and he was determined to reach new heights. And so, after tirelessly building St. George security and alarms from the ground up, Milton boldly decided to sell off the company, ready to chase his grandest dreams yet. He started his search for a buyer. Not too long in his quest for buyers, he found people who were super invested in the company. Glenn and Tammy Phils, a married couple with enthusiasm and entrepreneurial spirit, saw an opportunity to take the company to new heights when they crossed paths with him. They were super excited to have the company running immediately. They had so many dreams, both for themselves and the company. After intense negotiations and careful consideration, they reached an agreement, and the couple bought the company from Milton for a sum totaling $793,000. With the ink barely dry on the paperwork, the couple assumed ownership of the business, with so much anticipation for the promising future ahead. Here goes the interesting twist. Their excitement quickly turned to dismay as they got deeper into the company's operations. It became apparent that they had inherited more than just a business, they had inherited a tangled web of financial issues and mismanagement. They inherited problems. The first red flag cropped up when they attempted to collect customer payments, only to discover that Trevor Milton had instructed them to make checks payable to him personally rather than to the company itself, which means that the transaction that was supposed to be made to the company was made to Milton instead. This was the crazy thing about it. Questions have been asked as to why he did that, but then fraudsters never have an answer to why they do what they do. Frustration and confusion mounted as the couple attempted to reach out to Milton for clarification and resolution, only to find that he had vanished. They called repeatedly and left messages and emails, but Milton never returned them. With time, the couple struggled with mounting debts and smaller resources. As if the financial strain wasn't enough, the onset of a recession dealt a crushing blow to the company's customers. With economic uncertainty looming large, more and more customers began to cancel their home security systems to save money. Soon enough, the couple couldn't keep up, eventually closing the business. Things got bad enough for them that they couldn't cope, and they had to deal with the setback for a big part of their lives. Milton never reached out to them, which was the saddest. At his end, he had moved on to something else. This is just a part of fraudulent schemes Trevor Milton had been involved in. The story gets juicier as we dig deeper. After ruining the innocent couple, Milton felt really good about himself because he had lots of money now. He lived in luxury and thought he was untouchable despite doing something terrible and unthinkable. As time passed, Milton's insatiable desire for success led him to start another company. Inspired by the booming e-commerce industry, he founded Upillar, an online marketplace selling second-hand goods. From automobiles and boats to recreational vehicles and even aircraft, Upillar aimed to cater to the diverse needs of its clientele. Despite being easy to use and looking cool, Upillar had difficulty bringing in a profit. Milton thought it would be a big hit for people wanting to buy used stuff at good prices, but it didn't work out that way. Sales were low, and Milton felt disappointed and annoyed. Somehow, it felt like karma for what he had done to the innocent couple. Even though Milton tried hard to make Upillar famous with ads and support from famous people, it still didn't rake in the amount he wanted, and this was where he started getting frustrated. Milton realized that even if you try hard, you might not succeed. Feeling the pressure and running out of money, Milton decided to give up on Upillar and try something else. Of course, this was all part of his journey, and Milton never thought of giving because he understood that. Then again, Milton felt uncomfortable after a while. The thing about him is that he never likes to stay idle for too long. He kept pondering on what else to lay his hands on. That's when he came up with the idea for Dehybrid. 
a company that would change how trucks ran on the road. Milton is a go-getter, so he wasted no time. He landed a deal with Swift, a huge company that owned many trucks. They agreed to let Dehybrid convert up to 800 trucks with their cool technology. It was a massive deal, worth a whopping $16 million. Suddenly, Dehybrid was the talk of the town. His sales and marketing side of him always shows up. But then things took a turn. Swift wasn't happy with how the truck conversions were going, and they ended up suing Dehybrid. They said the trucks didn't work like they were supposed to, and some people running Dehybrid were using the company's money for themselves, which isn't cool. Then, things got even messier. A report came out from Hindenburg, and it wasn't good news for Dehybrid. They said Milton had been telling investors that the deal with Swift was worth way more than it was, like $250 million to $300 million. That's a lot of money to exaggerate. Despite all the drama, Milton kept pushing forward. He believed in Dehybrid and what they were trying to do. But in 2014, the ride came to an end. Another company called Worthington swooped in and bought Dehybrid for way less than it was originally worth, just $16 million. It was a wild ride for Trevor Milton and the Dehybrid, full of ups and downs. But then, that's business for you. Sometimes you win big and sometimes you take a hit. But one thing's for sure, Trevor Milton wasn't afraid to take a chance and chase his dreams, even if it didn't always work out the way he hoped. Leaving St. George with a hefty $16 million in his pocket, Milton made his way to Salt Lake City, ready to embark on his next big venture. With dreams of creating the next Tesla in the trucking industry, he sought support from his friends, who eagerly invested in his vision. Now a wealthy man, Milton wasted no time settling into his new city. Known for his relentless drive and determination, he wasted no time in getting to work on his trucking startup. However, Milton was not just focused on business, he also sought to expand his social circle. With his newfound wealth, Milton once treated himself and about 30 friends to a lavish trip to Hawaii for his birthday. While on the trip, they planned to go hiking, but things turned sour when Milton felt abandoned by some of his companions. Frustrated and disappointed, he vented his frustrations in a group text, expressing his feelings with a terse, screw you guys. Maybe finding reliable friends with such an amount in your name is next to impossible. It was a rare moment of vulnerability for the typically confident and driven Milton. Despite all that, Milton remained undeterred in his pursuit of success. A few months later, he founded Nikola, a trucking startup inspired by the innovative spirit of inventor Nikola Tesla a company that makes electric and hydrogen-powered vehicles and energy solutions. This time, Milton had a massive picture in his head. The idea of making Nikola the next Tesla ran through his mind. Well, of course, it never hurts to dream big, especially with Trevor Milton. Soon enough, Nikola Corporation started getting the attention it needed. People were keying into the Nikola dream. Trevor Milton started getting cold for interviews, which was exciting for him. At some point, people even likened him to Elon Musk. Between November 2019 and September 2020, Trevor Milton engaged in a deceptive scheme to trick regular people, known as retail investors, into buying shares of Nikola Corporation. Milton used social media and interviews on TV, in newspapers, and in podcasts to spread false information and convince people to invest in Nikola's stock. In 2016, he announced they'd reveal their Nikola One semi-truck. They said it would work perfectly at a big event on December 1st. Everyone was excited because Nikola claimed they had the best hydrogen tech for trucks ever. Everyone was excited about this and they looked forward to it. However, that was just one of his many lies. Here's the thing and where the problem was. He falsely claimed that the company had successfully created a fully functional semi-truck prototype called the Nikola One, when in reality, the prototype didn't even work. He also lied about Nikola developing an electric and hydrogen-powered pickup truck called the Badger from scratch using its technology when that wasn't true either. Additionally, Milton falsely said that Nikola was producing hydrogen at a low cost when, in fact, the company wasn't making any hydrogen at all. As if all that wasn't enough, Milton also misled investors by saying that the reservations for Nikola's semi-trucks were firm orders worth billions of dollars when most could be canceled. They later discovered it wasn't after claiming the Nikola One prototype truck was fully functional and working. In January 2018, 
Milton even posted a video on Twitter showing the Nikola One driving independently. But the truck was being towed downhill and wasn't operating independently. At this point, Trevor Milton had one goal, to boost the company's stock price. While spreading false information to boost Nikola's stock price, Milton also misled an individual to get them to accept options to buy Nikola stock instead of cash. He did this even though he couldn't sell his stock because of a lockdown period. Milton deceived this person about Nikola's business to convince them to use the stock options to buy a ranch in Utah instead of getting cash. As the calendar flipped to 2017, Nikola stood its position as a force to be reckoned with in the industry. It had strategic partnerships with esteemed companies like PowerCell AB, a Swedish company specializing in hydrogen fuel cell stacks, and Bosch, a renowned name in engineering and technology. With these alliances in place, Nikola accelerated its efforts. Seeing their achievements so far, Milton revealed it was time to unveil the Nikola 2 prototypes and lay the groundwork for a future powered by zero emission transportation. And the unveiling happened. Just like that, things were moving fast for Nikola and Trevor Milton. In 2018, Nikola was making waves again, this time with the bold declaration that the Nikola 1 was poised to become the largest energy consumer in America. However, the path to success was fraught with challenges as Nikola found itself in a legal battle with Tesla, alleging patent infringement and seeking $2 billion in damages. Despite the legal drama, the company remained steadfast in its commitment to innovation, refunding all 11,550 deposits for its vehicles to demonstrate financial integrity and transparency. In 2019, the world watched in awe as Nikola unveiled its ambitious vision for the future at the Nikola World event, showcasing five groundbreaking zero-emission vehicles set to revolutionize the transportation industry. A partnership with Anheuser-Busch, which ordered 800 trucks from Nikola, further solidified the company's status as a visionary leader in sustainable transportation. Amidst the excitement, Nikola extended a helping hand to Tesla offering a new design for its Cybertruck as a backup plan, in case pre-orders fell short. Meanwhile, a groundbreaking partnership with GM marked a new chapter for Nikola, with GM taking on the responsibility of fuel cell and battery systems in exchange for a $2 billion equity stake. However, as Nikola's star rose, dark clouds loomed over. The release of a damning report by Hindenburg, titled Nikola, how to parlay an ocean of lies into a partnership with the largest auto OEM in America sent shockwaves through the industry. Allegations of deception and fraud rocked the company to its core, leading to the resignation of CEO Trevor Milton and a period of uncertainty for the company. A federal judge in New York City, Edgardo Ramos, sentenced Milton after a jury found him guilty of securities fraud and wire fraud. Milton was accused of inflating Nikola's stock value by making exaggerated claims about the company. Milton told investors that Nikola had working prototypes of emission-free trucks, had billions of dollars worth of orders, and produced cheap hydrogen fuel. Prosecutors said all these statements were false. They asked Judge Ramos to give Milton an 11-year prison sentence and a $5 million fine. Milton's lawyers argued for probation, saying he was innocent. Judge Ramos also fined Milton $1 million and said he must repay later. Milton can stay out of jail on bail while he appeals the verdict. He got emotional and quoted from the Bible, asking for leniency. He said he felt sorry for everyone involved and insisted he didn't commit the crimes. Judge Ramos said that Milton wasn't as bad as some other fraudsters he had sentenced, but he still hurt real people. He said the losses caused by Milton's actions were huge. Not many electric vehicle executives have been convicted of crimes, but Nikola wasn't the only new car company to get lots of investment without making profits or many vehicles, leading to big losses for shareholders. Companies like Canoe, Lordstown Motors, and Lucid Motors got lots of money from investors hoping to challenge big car makers like Ford and GM and make a lot of money. Trevor Milton hoped to try the same thing with Nikola, but eventually it backfired. Electric cars were supposed to be easier to make because they have fewer parts than gas cars. However, making many cars, making people trust the brand, and meeting safety rules were harder and more expensive than startup bosses thought. 
Some companies ended up facing more lawsuits than making cars. Many electric car startups joined the stock market by partnering with special companies that helped them get listed. This lets them avoid some of the rules and checks that usually come with going public. People who bought these stocks lost a lot of money. Nikola's shares have dropped by 99% since 2020, and now they're worth about 90 cents each. Back in June 2020, they were selling for over $65 each. Short sellers, who make money when stock prices go down, were the only ones who profited from this situation. Companies looking for overvalued stocks made much money from Nikola and other electric car startups. Less experienced investors suffered the most from the losses. According to prosecutors, Trevor Milton targeted individual investors who weren't experts. He even posted a video on YouTube that made it seem like Nikola had a working prototype, even though it was just rolling down a hill. They narrated that he also lied about his background. He said he left college to start his own business, but he was kicked out for cheating. After selling some of his Nikola shares for $100 million, Milton spent $83.5 million on things like planes and fancy houses in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Prosecutors say Nikola investors lost more than $660 million because of Milton's actions, even though a defense expert claimed the losses were much lower, maybe even zero. The rise and fall of Trevor Milton and Nikola Corporation serve as a lesson in business and investing. Milton's journey from humble beginnings in Kanab, Utah, to the heights of success and subsequent legal troubles highlights the dangers of unchecked ambition and the consequences of deception. Because he was too ambitious, he never cared who would get hurt in the process, for example, the couple he left bankrupt. Milton's relentless drive and determination throughout his career pushed him to pursue big visions and ambitious goals. However, his pursuit of success led him down a path of deceit and manipulation, resulting in significant financial losses for investors and legal outcomes for himself. The saga of Nikola Corporation stresses the importance of transparency, integrity, and accountability in business practices. It serves as a reminder that investors must exercise caution and due diligence when evaluating opportunities, and that success built on false promises and inflated claims is ultimately unsustainable. As the electric vehicle industry continues to evolve and innovate, companies must prioritize honesty and integrity, fostering trust and credibility among investors and stakeholders. Only through ethical conduct and responsible leadership can businesses thrive and contribute positively to society. In the aftermath of Milton's downfall, the lessons learned from the Nikola story will undoubtedly rumble throughout the business world, serving as a sobering reminder of the risks inherent in pursuing success at any cost. So, there you have it. The incredibly brave but unfortunately damning story of Trevor Milton and the electric car for trucks, which could have been the talk of the whole world. But away from the fraudster, thank you for sticking around until the end. Don't hesitate to smash the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and ring the notification bell so you will be among the first to know when we publish even more discovery stories of clever fraudsters globally.